Are you looking for a RAID log template in Microsoft Excel? Perhaps one just like this. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step exactly how to create this template, but better still, I'll be breaking down why we include all the columns and the kinds of information you are going to want to capture within each one so you know how to use this document going forward. Now, if you do want to save yourself some valuable time, first link in the description below is for you. That will enable you to pick up this raid log within a few minutes, if that. That being said, let me now walk you through exactly how to create this raid log from scratch if you did want to create it yourself and you did want to know exactly how it's all been set up. So the first thing I'd recommend that you do is in B1, just type in raid log and expand the font size to around 24. This way, if you open it, if your stakeholders open it, they know exactly what they're looking at. From A1 through to R1, I'm gonna put a light gray background on. Again, that will just help us to differentiate this as a heading area. I'm gonna do the same actually from A2 through to R2. And what we're gonna do in B2 is just literally explain what this acronym is. Just make it really clear. So risks, assumption, issues, and dependencies. So as I say, that is what RAID means, R-A-I-D. This is an acronym, and this is what this template is all about. It helps you to track risks, assumptions, issues, and dependencies. I'm gonna bold those out. Now, this document is very important. It's kept up to date during the project, but it should be created at the forefront. And it does help you to stay on track and avoid problems. Now, typically the project manager creates this. Sometimes it's the team lead and it has to be updated as the project goes on. So I just thought I'd kind of drop that in if you're new to raid logs and you weren't quite sure about what it is and when to complete it, work on it, etc. So the next thing I'd recommend that you do in B4 is just type in project name. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bold and gonna put some fill color again in a light gray, and I'm gonna put all borders around B4 through to C4. And what this does is it gives us a nice kind of content area for us to enter you know, what this project name is. If I was to go view and remove the grid lines, you'll see it creates this nice kind of content area. So it's really, really useful. The next thing I'm gonna recommend that you do is we're gonna put in updated by and updated date. And then that way we can log this information as well. Really important to see, you know, who's been working on it and when were they doing so. So again, light gray, and we're just gonna make this bit bigger. Now we can always work on the column widths as we go on, but let's just kind of make that look visually appealing now. Now we're gonna build out the main table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you all the columns to include, and I'll briefly touch upon uh, what they're for and what you should be including underneath them. We will be setting up some drop downs and I'll do those at the end just so we can batch them all together. Otherwise it becomes a little bit bitty. Now I'm gonna put this kind of light gray in B7. That's the top left of the table. Then I'm gonna put task in here. We'll do the formatting in a minute. We'll just get all of the, we'll get all of the column headers in first. Now the task is just a short name. You should put in here, you know, a title for, the task, the risk, the issue, dependency, assumption, etc. And then what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be typing in description. This is where you can just add additional information about one of those or what's ever populated in these rows as we go on. Next, we're gonna have impact. This is gonna be a drop down, but this is all about showcasing what will happen if the risk, assumption, issue, dependency isn't handled. You know, will there be an impact on delay, budget? You get the idea. So we've got impact. We're then going to have probability. This is all about how likely is it to happen. And we'll be setting this up as a drop down as well, because it's always going to be one of typically three results. It's going to be low, medium, or high. We're then going to have mitigation or action. Essentially, this enables us to document what you're going or could do to prevent or fix if it were to arise. We're gonna put RAID category. So here we can document, is it a risk? Is it an assumption, an issue or a dependency? We're then gonna put status. Oh, not in there. We're gonna put status in here. This is gonna be a drop down. I'll show you those options in a second, but it just helps us to keep track of where we are on each item. We're then gonna put owner, essentially who's responsible. Date added, when it was added to this log. We are then gonna put date due, and that is when it should be fixed or even reviewed. 
last updated. When was there an update on each item? And then comment to notes, because it's always useful to have a content area when we can expand and just add extra information, updates or reminders. So now they're all in, I'm just gonna select all of them from C7 through to N7. I'm gonna bold, put the gray on, and we'll leave it like that for now. We'll do some last kind of formatting at the end. I'm gonna type in planning phase here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way across from B8 through to N8, light gray. I'm going to bold as well, and I'm gonna merge and center. And then I'm going to align left. And that just creates this kind of, if you look, it just goes all the way across and it stops you from being able to enter any information under here. Because what we're gonna be doing essentially is creating four different content areas. So let me build those up for it first. So select this in B8, control C, and then let's give ourselves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So on the 10th, control V, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the 10th. And we'll do one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Control V. Now that applies all the formatting we need, but we do need to update these because what we have are planning phase. We have in progress, and I'll briefly touch upon this in a second, deliverables. The, deliverables and in the bottom one we're going to have results now essentially what this does is it gives us the opportunity to add raid items against each little section if you like so in the planning phase you know it's all about essentially adding anything that is related to that phase before the project starts or in the early startup of that project in progress items that you're actively working on or need to manage during the main part of your project Deliverables, any raid items that affect or relate to the outputs or products the team is delivering. And then results, raid items, this is where you document raid items that are related to the project's final outcome, the evaluation or post project review. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some, if I go down all the way to the bottom, and we need roughly 10 rows at the bottom as well. So about that, I'm going to put all borders around. And then what I'm going to do here is yeah, just make sure it looks nice visually. So we'll just bring this across a little bit. We'll bring this across a little bit. And you can always, you know, you can always wrap the text as well to make it appear on the next line if you wanted to do that. But let's just make this all kind of, make the column widths a bit bigger and this is gonna be a lot much larger. Now, all we need to do is set up the drop downs because it's, there's gonna be some fields that always, we want the same kind of information to be captured. So as an example, impact, probability, and the raid category and also the status. So let us now add these. So what I'd recommend that you do in the first sheet is just call this the raid log. So rename that. And then the second sheet, just call it drop downs or drop down values. And then in here, all we're gonna be doing, it's very, very simple, is we're just gonna be adding all the drop down options. So we've got raid category. I missed the E there. So let's put that in. We've got raid, raid category. We have impact. We have probability and we also have status so these are the options so what i'm going to do actually let's just bold that make these headers again and we'll put the gray on so bold gray bold should have just done that actually format painter in there and then in here so raid category is going to be risk issue um sorry risk assumption sorry issue and dependency and then we're going to put a table around that and then impact is going to be low medium high or critical and probability could be the same it's going to be um is it low medium no let's put let's put let's put not likely likely high high we'll do that that we could also do um yeah, let's leave it at that for now. You could put a few more in like not very likely, not likely, likely, very likely. You get the idea. You could do something like that. So you could put those in. And then status, let me just respell that. The status is going to be, um, and actually what we're going to do for the impact, we'll move this down. We're going to put negligible in there. Negligible. I hope they spelled that right, but you get the idea. And then status is going to be open, in progress, we're going to have ongoing, 
on track. We're going to have needs review. We are going to have approved. We're going to have overdue because that can happen as well. We're going to have on hold resolved and lastly closed. And then all we're going to do is just put the kind of uh, these borders around and then we could, if we really want to get like this, we could, you know, if you want to make it look nice visually, we can do this. And then all we want to do in the raid log is set up the drop downs. So the best way to do this, let's start with impact, select all of column E, then click data, data validation, then click data validation. In the settings, in the allow, select list, and then left click in source, and then immediately left click in drop down values. And then we're going to select D3 through to D7, press OK. Now, what this does, you'll notice, is there's drop downs now from all of those different options that we set up in that table, in that range. I think we've even spelled negligible wrong, <laughs> but you get the idea. Now, the problem with setting it up in this way is we don't want this drop down in these cells. So to remove those and do that quickly, E1 through to E7 then go data, data validation, data validation, and the list will just put any value and that will remove from here. But every cell under E9 will have it applied apart from these as well. So it just means if you keep adding, you know, rows to the table, then they're going to keep it's going to keep appearing, which is exactly what you want to happen. So there is the impact. Now we're going to do probability. It's the same process. Select column F. Click here in data validation under data ribbon. Data validation list. Left click in here. Left click in here. This is the probability. Let's do this one for now. I'm showing you the process. The probability needs updating a little bit. The, the actual options. Press OK, and then we're going to remove those out again. Data. Data validation. Data validation any value. Let me actually check what I've put in this one in my previous. Okay, I haven't I haven't set that up. But that's okay. Well, I'll update that by the time the video is finished. And we're going to do mm, raid category, select this, data, data validation, data validation, list, left click in source, go in here. And I'm going to go all of those, press okay. Now we've got to remove there, data validation, and we do any value. So now it's just in all of these. And then lastly, we need to do status. So select column I in the data ribbon, data validation, left click data validation, allow, change that to list, left click in source, click in drop down, and then left click from H3 through to H12, press OK. And then we're going to remove those out by clicking data validation again and changing the allow to any value and press OK. And the beauty of doing data validation and drop downs like this is if you go in here and then let's just say I did spell this proper properly or change this to, you know, another value, it'll automatically update in the drop down. So it saves yourself a lot of time. And it also prevents people from putting other information in. You just want these to be the options, nothing else. So that's how to create a RAID log in Microsoft Excel. It's a fantastic template. It will set off your projects in really good stead and enable you to track accordingly as they go on. As I say, if you want to pick up this document, it's the first link in the description down below. Other than that, build this yourself. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. With that said, best of luck with your projects and I hope you have an excellent day.